Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today is Sunday's So Steady Facebook Live with Kate Quinn. Today, we're going to share some designs that feature the Curly Q sets one and two. So I'll be using all of the templates that are in the set. You can buy any of these templates individually. There are two different sets, and each of them have six different sizes in the set. I'll start off with that real quick. So we'll put both of these up next to each other so you can see the difference. Okay, so real quick, you can see that they have different sizes. So these are mostly the odd sizes right here. And these ones are mostly the evens until you get right up to here. So this 11 and a half inch wide, what that means is that this will fit into the 12 inch block. And I'll show you the difference between this 11 and a half and this one. We're actually going to do a fun design with both of those. But there's a lot of power and potential that can be done with these. Right, so you can see that they make a circle. You kind of have to fight for the circle, and I'll show you what I mean by that. But they'll make a beautiful curl about three quarters of the way around the circle. So let's go ahead and um, talk about them. We're going to do just a very simple basic design first that uses our crosshair marking tools. And then we'll do some progressively more um, elaborate designs. And none of them are super complicated. Um, I had one that was a little too complicated. I had to set it aside. <laughs> I, I think you could do it. I can show it on paper. But it's too complicated to explain. You'd have to make a lot of markings. And we just want to keep it fun and simple. So let's start with um, these two sizes of boxes. We've got a 2 and a half inch right here. And I'm going to put the basic 2 and a half inch it's very tiny, it's so cute. And then we'll put um, a little bit of different in this space. So this is a four inch box. So we would have to use the three and a half inch. And then this is the two and a half inch box. And so we'll talk a little bit about choices that you can make if you want to add more density or use different ones of these. You can do different crosshairs. But I think the first one that we'll do is just the eight point and we'll do it in this four inch box right here. So let's just mark that. Oh, this is the wrong one. This is the six point, get the other one. There we go. All right, so we said that this purple line right there is the four inch box. So if you look at these numbers right here across there, this is the four inch mark line. So I can just put that right on there and kind of, you know, fudge it a little bit, get it lined up nicely. And this is gonna give me the center of the box. So we'll mark that right away. Can I talk and mark at the same time? I don't know, can I? <laughs> So Honey's here today too, so if you have some questions, you can uh, throw those out to him. He's helping me kind of get organized. And let's just start with this one. If we need to mark some more, then we'll just mark each one individually. That'll give us some time to make decisions if we want to. So picking up your thread right here in the center, and I'm gonna get out my little tiniest one. And I wanna just kind of show you real quick, these tools, I, I grouped them by size. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this card up here. If I have both sets, that is 12 units, and we saw that there's two 11 and a halves, right? So these are kind of small. Look at how tiny they are. So we're just gonna sort of put them in size order, right? We'll, we'll do it like this so you can kind of get a, a visual on it. Can you see all of those? So these are the four smallest sizes. So this one is so tiny. He's so tiny. I probably will never use him. I won't lie. <laughs> I don't want to sew anything that small. I don't care what it is. That's even smaller than I'd want to make a circle. It's, a, it's one and a half, so you're sewing that essentially twice, right? Whenever you're measuring with a spin effects, this single entity is always half of what they say that it will sew out. Right, So it's going to sew three quarters in this direction and then another three quarters when you have it on the line. If this is the center, 
that's always how these are going to work. You're always going to get the actual template measure is half of whatever that number says. So for me, oh, love it, but too small. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so here's our two and a half, right? This is the one we're going to use for this design. And that again, then is this is one and a quarter, right? This size right here, one and a quarter. Okay. So these four are like the smallest ones. And if I group them together throughout the day, I want you to notice that this size right here is very close between all of them. You could see that one's a little smaller, but if we stacked these up like this, right? And I'll just put the last one under there too. Notice how the curl itself is, is similar. It's not exactly the same, but it is a close approximation. So for me, these four smallest ones, if I was gonna use them, I'd make me use them together. The curl starts getting much bigger as you go up in size. So let me just put the next group up there. Okay, so this is the next sort of grouping of sizes. And the, this group right here is one and a half to four and a half. So we just set those aside. And then this group is five and I would actually group the eight and a half in here too. So if you needed a group of four, this would be good. You could put the eight and a half on this one as well. So I'll just grab that real quick just to see these kind of like when you line them up, if you put these together, you'll see that the, the opening of the curl is close. It's similar right there. Okay, so I could use these and they could work together nicely. Okay, now I'm going to take this eight and a half and I'm going to set it right over here and I'm going to show you another grouping. Then this is eight and a half. Okay, so we have a nine and a half and we have the ten and a half and we have the eleven and a half. And these, these all sort of have the same curl size. So they do graduate, just so you know, each one gets a little bit bigger each time. But I think these could work together sympathetically. So like when I was designing, I kind of group them together. I don't want this tiny little size to be matching up with this big little size. I just don't think they work nicely together. So anyway, that's just something to think about. And in order to have that graduation of size, you would need both sets. You're not gonna be able to get that graduation with just one set because the numbers are just gonna jump up too quickly for you to have those intermediates on there. Okay, so let me just show you the last one since we can. This is the 11 and a half W, and that is, I guess, wide, 11 and a half wide. So we have two 11 and a halves. They're both the same size this direction, but you can see this one is very wide, and this one's just more regular wide, you know, normal. And I actually have a really cute design that's actually gonna use both of those that I was playing with. So we'll put these together and just show you some fun things you can do with the different sizes. Okay, so let's get back to where we were. Any questions so far? There's 12 total, just for your knowledge. So let's get our little two and a half out. And I'm actually gonna get the three and a half also. So this is the two and a half, and then we'll get the three and a half out as well, because we are gonna use both of those. All right, I had a lot of trouble keeping them all organized, can you tell? <laughs> okay, so on this one right here, we're just gonna do the three and a half and we'll just fit him in here, just regular. We'll just sew around just like we would any spin effects. And I'm gonna flip him this way just because I can read the lines a little more easily. Putting my needle right there in the center. Here we go. So needle down right in the center. Pick up that bobbin thread just like always. Notice I got a little channel there that I can work with, which is kind of cool. One of the things to note then is that I'm always sewing on the side without that opening, right? If you look at it this way, this is the stitching side, right? I don't want to stitch on that side. So I'll line it up. This right here is our alignment and I've got grips on both sides of these templates. So you can see that's why I have my stable tape is up. Let me press the buttons. Here we go. Okay, so right there, it's difficult to go all the way back to that side. If you want to close it, you would really actually want to take it off 
and flip this over and realign everybody and down at the bottom as well. And that would let you close that loop on the design. So let me show you what I mean. I'll turn it so you guys can see. Looks like we need to adjust our tension as well. It's really high for this thread. So there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna line it up. I've got this center line right there and this cutaway, the line is right below it. So we're gonna have to just fudge it a little bit to get it aligned. You see where we are now, we're lined right up on our crosshair line and this is how I could sew the rest of that side. Oh, what did I do? Did I mess up? I don't know, somehow we kind of moved a little bit. Oh, darn it. Let's just go back to the center here. We'll just, this, this one will be a little flaky because he had a little meltdown. Okay, and then let's just keep sewing. Get these out of the way. We're gonna line them up. Try to get your cross mark right there. This is the alignment each time. So let me see if I can show you right there. Right there, get them lined up. And you're gonna sew. And I'm not gonna try to do that full circle. I, I'll show you that maybe a little bit later, but I'm just gonna do three quarters. And I'm gonna stitch right back to the center. And this way we can do it on each one. So right here, we were talking about that grouping of four. This is a four inch square. So if I wanna see if another one of these can fill this longer space, all I have to do is just put it on there. I don't have to do any math or I don't have to think real hard. I'm just gonna lift that up a little bit, slide it in there. The needle's holding my position and then I can just align it. As long as this doesn't exceed the boundary, then I can sew it, right? So this is on the diagonal of this square. It's a little bit longer, but it's gonna make approximately the same curl. This one's just a little bit bigger. And I could do all of them on this shape, like I can do all the diamonds, because this is a spinifex. I don't have to do them in any specific order. Let's just do all of these, and then we'll do the other ones. So curl, and come back. And I'll just, right now, I'll kind of work with these without flipping my fabric. I know some people really appreciate that I do that. Sometimes it's hard without you being able to see, but I think for this one, it'll be okay. So these are small. They're pretty easy to hold on to. They're not getting away from you type of thing. And back to the center. And then we'll do this last one. Now, one of the things that's fun about these is I can go both directions. Like I don't have to go just one way. I can flip this over and I can make my curl go the opposite way. Okay, so let's take this off and we'll put the other one on. I'm also gonna cut these threads and get them out of our way as well. So I've already got bonbon time. We've barely been sewing <laughs> and I still have a bonbon already. Oh, that happens. All right, so pretty cute, don't you think? I love that swirly shape. It dips out, and wherever your center alignment is, the bottom of it is going to go beyond that. That'll be something that is more important for you to note. So if this is the midline right here, and we lined this up, let me just line it up on a line, any line. Right here, I've got it lined up right there. Notice that the space right here is bigger than a quarter inch. So I do think that's important for you to note right there. See how much bigger it is? You can't think that you can align this on the line and that you're going to get it touching right the line. You would actually have to move it up. It's about a quarter of an inch. So if I wanted my little curl to touch this line, I would mark a line inside that space a quarter inch in, and then I can use that as the reference. And that way your curl won't go outside the line. All right, so that was the four. We did all the diagonals. I'm gonna get my three and a half inch back out and we'll do the rest of those. This one has a little opening that's bigger so it's easier to put on. Okay, and we're just gonna keep them all going the same direction so far. We'll do some different directions a little bit later. Just like with any spin effects, if you can look inside your opening right there and try to get him aligned, I think that's gonna be better. That helps make sure that we don't have a messy center right there. Let's see if we can get you guys in just a little bit closer. Right there. 
There we go. All right, and then I think that's the last one, right? So this one, he's gonna be wonky. He's got a mind of his own. So this is the eight point crosshair. So we use the longer ones to kind of fill up the box. And what that means is we won't get sort of a round appearance. If we did everything the same size, that would make it easy for us to get the same look, right? But because these are gonna be a little bit longer, it's a little bit more of a square, which kind of fits that square motif. So you have two choices. If you did it all the same size, you're gonna get a little bit more of a rounded look and these would be a little shorter. They wouldn't fill up that corner quite as much, okay? So let me see if we can flip that over, see if we have a better view. Oh, oh and I missed one. <laughs> I sure did. Sue, you, you called it, right? Should I go back and do it? Do you want me to do it now? So there's kind of what we're getting right there. So that's without all the markings and stuff like that. And here, I'll kind of stick my finger over that one. Ha, there you go. Right, just so you can see. But that's really the basic design, but I don't really think that design really exploits how cool these tools are. It's st still pretty, you know, you can still do things like that, but these are the very petite size. These are the small ones. So let's go ahead and let's just do a few more. And I'm gonna do this little one over here. We'll put the crosshair in right here. If you have your mini crosshair square, that would work, I think, really well for this one because the crosshair squares that I have right now, I'd have to find my other one. They're just not as um, easy to mark the center. So let me see if I can grab that other one. What did, what did I do with them? I, I set them down. Oh, he's hiding right here. There we go. So this one is the six point. I'm gonna put this on and we'll actually make two sets of lines. So let me just lift up with my knee lift so I can get under there. And we're just gonna line him up kind of right in the middle of that box as best we can. It's supposed to be two and a half inches. It looks like it might be a little wide, but we're good to go. We'll, we'll just play with it. So let's make double sets, right? So we gotta mark the center so we can have that. These are so tiny, I think we could easily fit additional um, curls in there without any problem. So if you had, you know, some little embellishment, like you wanted to put this on a, a jacket or a, a lapel collar, something like that, or you have some like little tiny boxes and you need a little design to fill that, I think this would be really fun. I think we missed one again. Right there. I'm lining up the white lines right there to get that last one in. I, I finished and I was missing this little guy right here. So let's get all lined up. Make sure we're aligned. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna try and go around in a more orderly fashion this time so I don't miss anybody. <laughs> Because I was, I missed a couple of them that last time. He just has a mind of his own. Here we go. And I'll just put this in first. Kind of want to get it in where it's widest so I can easily get my foot settled without bumping anything or crackling on the ruler. Okay, so let's just go ahead and we'll just start putting these little curls in. You can see he's gonna fit right in that two and a half. And we'll just be doing more of these. We're just gonna align each one on the line. And this is gonna show you that little bit more of a round impact. And when you're playing with these, kind of the thing to check is making sure that once you put in more lines, you wanna make sure that maybe they don't overlap or that you like them if they do overlap. If you like how that looks, that'll be something for you to check yourself. So each time, just checking my line right there. I think that one might be a little off. I'm gonna to have to look a little better. At 
this point, I'm gonna pull those threads out of the way so that I'm not gonna be stitching through them. And then we'll try to get aligned. It's hard, much harder to line it up with this white fabric, I think. I don't think I realized how difficult that was gonna be. Back to the center. Each time, looking for the alignment right there, trying to get that so that we can space them really nice. Because they're small, they're easy to hold on to. I don't feel like there's a lot of slippage with these because they're so petite. We can really get a good hold on them. Is that my last one? Yeah, I think this is the last one. So checking that alignment right there, just keeping the edge of the ruler foot on there. So obviously this is gonna have more stitching there in the center right there, and then we'll just do some tacking stitches right there to tack it off. Okay, and pull that thread so we can cut that bobbin. So right there's my bobbin thread. I'm gonna just clip that. Because I did those micro tacking stitches, he's already tacked in. And I just wanna, number one, release him from the bottom. So there's two right there, and the bobbin will just draw down to the bottom. And then we'll just cut these, the rest of these guys. So this is basically the same shape that you're gonna get with every single one of these if you do that whatever your spin effect. So this is the six point crosshair with two sets of lines. So that's gonna be 12 iterations, 12 uh, curly cues on there. And then you can just make that bigger. You can always make one go this way and the next one go that way. You can always flip them around. And then if we do a back to back curly cue, they're gonna have a little crossover. So we do have a design coming up that will show that next. So let's go ahead and we'll get that one out. And we're gonna start using some of the bigger ones. This is an isosceles triangle and we're gonna use this center line to line it up. And we just can, we don't have to do any math. You could just put it on there and you can see what will fit, right? So I know that mine will fit that 11 and a half inch. So I'm just gonna grab that out. And we're gonna do the skinny one. This is the regular 11 and a half and you can see the size right there. And he has that center line right there, so it's pretty easy to line him up. When I put this on, I can align right here on the bottom, right there, and then there's a center line right there that I can line it up with. When I put this on, I'm actually gonna tilt it a little bit, and I'll, I'll show you what I wanna do. What I wanna do is put this kind of right in the middle as much as I can so that it's basically touching those two sides. That's gonna give me that center alignment and I'm gonna sew this part of it and kind of get back to the center position right there. So I have these two points of alignment when I'm sewing. So I'll start with my needle right down here at the very base, right on that intersection of the two lines. And get him right in that little spot right there. All right. And I think he'll be fine because we are gonna stitch a little bit more right here. So we'll just leave these tails and we'll get lined up. Let me show you the alignment. Change this a little bit. Okay, can you guys see the whole thing, the whole design? There is no center reference line right along the bottom here. I wish there was, but there isn't. But what I'm doing is visually I'm aligning this curl right in the middle of the space so that there's the same distance on either side right there as I'm sewing it. Okay, and I'm gonna use that because I'm gonna put the other side on and that's gonna help me get everybody lined up. You'll see here on this one, as we sew around this, you'll see that we can't make a circle. We can't get all the way around just on one side. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna to come to the center line and I'm actually just, just gonna come up right here. The reason I wanna stop right at the top is this is the furthest position this way. So I know if I'm already at the top, then I'm always gonna push the template down to align the other side. I don't wanna sew anything that's gonna come forward of this furthest mark right there. Okay, so we're gonna do the other side and we'll just flip them over just like that. And we have some great reference positions already. Put this on. We know that he's touching at the top and we're going to line this up so this will stitch all the way down to the bottom in the exact same position. So by choosing those two things, those two alignments, the top and the bottom, we can easily line up and make sure that we get back to the bottom. Okay, so then I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit. If I want to sew back on this one, I've gotta connect it like that, right? So I'm gonna do this side to the middle, I'm looking for this quarter inch right there. So make sure we can fit in there and sew that nice. So we'll go this way. Check it just a little bit, making sure that we're right on the existing stitch line. So there's my closure. Okay, and then I'm gonna stop right at the top and I'm gonna check this side also. Okay. All right, I'll tip the camera just a little bit. We may have to adjust it again. So I'm at the top right now, and when I sew this side and I come around, I do wanna check and make sure I'm on the quarter inch on that side. So I'm just gonna try to get myself real tight there so I can sew on the existing stitch line. And down at the bottom right here, I'm aligned right on this quarter inch. I wanna end right where I started right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. So your spacing gauge is really great for helping control that and get yourself in. So this is what we have so far. This is our center design. And he does have, you know, extra stitching right at the top there. That's okay. We love that. It's nice and pretty. And now we're going to fill up the triangle with some additional design. Now we can do um, two different ways. We can fill it from the bottom towards the top or we can start up here and make it touch that way. So I think that's what we'll do. These ones are the longest and the first thing that you can do to see what will fit is just put that up there, you know, and see how far out, you know, I don't want him to go beyond the boundary right there. So I might say that this one is too long. So let's start working our way down. We know that from there to this space is now a little narrower. So this is the 11 and a half, and we're just gonna step down and see what will fit each time. Okay, so I'll put those up, all the big ones up. This is the 10 and a half, and I don't have to know if he's gonna fit, I can just look and try it, right? I want a quarter inch here and a quarter inch there. So notice right there, I'm not at the alignment on that cross line at the bottom, and I don't care. What I want is I want to push this up as far as he can so that I can just fit him into the space at a quarter inch. So right there and right there. I don't wanna cut in to this design right here, and I'm aligned, and I, I could put an arrow sticker right there. In fact, I will do that. I'll just put an arrow sticker there just so you can see that we're making this fit. We're not just accepting the size that it has, we're actually making it fit. And I'm gonna align the pink arrow essentially with the needle as much as I can, right? Just so it's aligned that way. Okay, and we already used our spacing gauge, but looks like I shifted just a little, so I'm just gonna make sure that he'll fit. Okay. And we want him to touch on this side. We do we want him to touch that one. So we're going to make that one a little tighter to make sure he'll fit in there. So we'll just put our little circle in there. And we're not trying to make that complete circle. We're just using the curly Q and we're connecting everybody at the bottom.
So let's see, are we at the bottom? Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll just, we're gonna keep filling this whole side of this triangle for you. So you can see how we're making things fit. Even if I shift this guy down, I could put him in there, but you're gonna lose some of this pretty curvature. So if I make a shorter one, I'm gonna get a little bit more of the curve. So this is the 10 and a half. And then we'll go to the nine and a half. And what this tells you, you know, what we're showing is that you can make things fit your own way. You can manipulate them. So we are pushing this down and this is getting a lot shorter. So see how much of this is cut off back here? It's possible that maybe the nine and a half really won't even fit as well. Let's see what we can find with the eight. See if he's a better fit. Because I think he might give a lot of this curve right here and still allow us to fit. So right here, looking for your two quarter inches. You can see right here, this is what we're gonna measure right there. So I'll come up just a little bit and maybe just a little bit on that. We wanna fit him right in. We don't wanna sew outside the boundary, but this is gonna pretty much give us that pretty curvature right there. So just touching and we'll come right back in. So I would make a note to myself, like if I'm trying to match up the other side, I might do something like this. This is 11.5, this is 10.5, now this is 8.5. If I want them to be the same, this will help me keep that information really powerful. Oh my gosh, you're right. It's so important. I love this thing. It just really helps me get the designs that I want to get. So what we're going to do is we're just going ahead and we're filling all the way down to the bottom. So I'm thinking that um, the eight might be a little big. Remember I said we can kind of pick up one more on either side. So if this is the eight, maybe that seven is what we need right now. So I'm going to see if I can find it. Seven and a half. And I think that's probably maybe as small as I'll go because I don't want this size to change that much, right? Once I start really going down to a smaller size, I start losing the curl because the curl starts getting smaller. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna fan this bottom size a little bit without changing any more sizing. So there's the curl, and he is a little bit smaller, and that's about as little bit smaller as I'm willing to go, I think, right down to the center. So now I'm gonna push him down, and I'm gonna align the same, just like we did before. I'm gonna try to get that same relationship. And I could have used the eight and just pushed him down also. Like if I feel like this is too small, you can just keep that size and just push the other one down looking each time to get that quarter inch right there and right there. I wanna be really close to the existing one, but I definitely don't wanna sew outside the boundary. That's really important to me, that the triangle boundary is not gonna be compromised. So touch. Okay, back to the center. And then we'll just keep doing the same thing. We're looking for those two things. I want the same relationship here. So pushing that in and trying to get real close right there. Okay, so let's just keep going. We'll just keep adding these in. Curl and come back around. Now, this space is starting to get a little bit narrow. I think that I can fit one more in because he's not, this one's not that wide. But if you see that this space now becomes too small for the curl, then I would stay out here and I would tip that like that. But this one is gonna fit in there. He's gonna fit and he's not gonna cross the boundaries. So you can see I've got one side I'm checking, one side, one side. He's got to fit essentially in all three of those spaces. So one, push him in a little bit, and he will definitely not stitch outside the boundary. And then I'm gonna show you, if you want to put a little flange in at the end, I'll show you with this one, just to close the design a little bit. 
Okay, so right here we're at the end, but let me take it off so you can see. We're not at this bottom line, at the bottom boundary. So I'm just gonna put this back on and I'm gonna show you how you can fudge the bottom. Okay, let me see if we can give you a better view. Okay, I think that's a good view. This is the line and the needle is about a quarter inch away from that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it touch on this side and I'm gonna try to keep the same quarter inch relationship right there. And I'm also gonna just check on this outside edge. We don't want him to go beyond the boundary, but we kinda wanna get close to that outer edge because that's what we did with all the other ones. So now I can just use this, sew up until my foot touches, and then I can just put a little tiny baby right on the end to get me right in there. So it's like a little partial right there. And then let's do this. We'll connect the dots right here with the spacing gauge. Okay, and we're right back to the center. Let's cut those threads and get those out of our way now since we're tied off. And then I'll let you see what you see. All right, so there we go. So what do you think? Do you like that? Do you think that's pretty? I love it. I think it's so pretty. This is the Curly Q, and we used both sets because set number one is I think the odd numbers. I'll put these up again real quick. So just now we used the 10 and a half, the 11 and a half regular. This is the center element right here. That's this distance right here. So it's uh, essentially sewing out at what? Five and five and three quarters. Yeah, five and three quarters. So that's this distance. And then we did the curl that connected. We closed the circle right here. So you got both sides and kind of this neat little, um, like a peacock feather right there in the middle. And then you get a little crossover right there. And then here, all we did is we let the design control it. This boundary is the control zone and we made it fit. So it's not about whether this template is this size or that size. We, we pushed that down and we made it aligned to what we wanted. So always the template should be working to do what you want to do. And even if you just have the even numbered set, you could totally do this. You would just be pushing the template down and you would still be able to have a couple different sizes in there and still make that work, even if you just had one set. I just have a few more size choices, but I really think that even just one set could absolutely do this. And then if you wanted to, what you could do is you could mark lines on the top of these if you wanted to. I'll, I'll show you one example of what I mean. If it was really important to me this is a straight line and I could line a straight line up and I could make a cross mark right there. So let me do it. Let me do a couple of these. This is like for that ridiculous precision level that some people want to have because some people do. I sometimes want that too, but sometimes I don't care. Just go down their straight line. You're lining this straight line up on the line that you've made and you could just mark these lines like that each time. Right on the straight line. So right there, this guy's on the line, badly. We'll get them all lined up. And I could mark these lines. And what that tells me is that when I put my feather on this side, I need to have my template a quarter inch away from that line. So I could use that with the spacing gauge right there and that means as the curl comes up, it's going to touch right at the same spot. So if I needed a really extreme level of precision, then I can have that I, if I want that. If not, I'm just going to sew it right now, and we're just going to let it be what it is. Okay? All right. Is that okay? I think it's important if you... If you want it to be precise, you can have it. And if you don't care, it's okay. It's okay. I can just let them be where they are and it's going to work out fine. So let's go back. We'll do the same numbers. We're going to do the 10 and a half, which is the first one. And then we did eight and then we did seven. So I'm just going to mark that seven too, because we only did one eight and then we went down. All the rest of these are 7.5. Okay. 
So, you know, as I'm playing, those are things that I would know. So here, in order to get the symmetry of this, I have to flip it over the other way. And what that means is maybe the lines are only gonna be as clear on one side, not as clear on the other side. You remember that the lines are etched on the back of the template. So you're gonna have to just play a little bit more to get them to line up. So right here, as I line this up, Remember what we said, we were looking for that quarter inch. The place where these both are gonna connect and give us that quarter inch is pretty much the same because now we have actually three different quarter inch markings that we can reference in order to get precision. A quarter inch there, a quarter inch there, and a little less than a quarter is fine there. As long as he's not gonna come up over that line, I'm good with it. So let's go ahead, we'll sew this one out. One of the things I like about this particular design is because the curly cues are opposed, I love that you get this really cool cross hatching in the center, which is really, really beautiful. We'll sew all the way back down. This design is very definitive because he has a lot of double stitching. Right? Doesn't that look so pretty? It kind of looks like a heart right there. And notice how this one like curled around a little bit more than this one. I don't care. It's fine. Just let it do what it wants to do. We don't need to be that perfect. Okay, so let's go down. We said the nine didn't fit, so we went right for the eight. That was our next one. And I think we have a line. Yeah, we do. Okay, put that on, get him right in the slot. And it's the same thing. I want that same relationship. I want the quarter inch out here, and I want a quarter inch on the inside. So if you can see, even though I've made the line, the relationship that I have, as long as I have that, I should be about the same distance. They should be pretty close. And that's because the template is not changing. I'm trying to get it to line up right there and just inside a quarter there. And at some point, that's because of how far out it is. So once I have that, I pretty much got my design already set. My little curl, and back again. Okay, back to the center. So if you're doing this design, don't have a seam right there in your triangle. Don't have the other side with some matching seam right there, because this is kind of busy. You're stitching back to that quite a few times. That would be a little bit frustrating, I think. All right, so we're doing really pretty. So this is the eight. So now let's put that seven and a half on and we'll just finish up the rest of them with the seven and a half. All right, I'm cleaning up. Can't find anything already. Seven and a half. Okay. I organized them all by size in this little basket because I knew it was going to be <laughs> difficult to keep track of. Okay, so same thing. You're looking for that same relationship on the outside and on the inside. Your space engage is your friend. He's going to help you get your design fitting nicely. And because we have two references that we need on opposite sides, it's pretty easy to kind of get him right in there. You can see that that's like right almost at a quarter inch for that one. And then just make sure you're touching on the outside of the template and we'll be able to put this in. Curl and back. It's hard here. You've got to look and make sure you're stopping in the right spot because we have more template behind us. So if we don't stop at the right spot, we could just sew off to Never Never Land. Okay, so now just rotate. Same thing. Looking for those two relationships, the quarter inch right there and maybe pushing this out so I can get that quarter inch right on that side. And then I'm ready to stitch. Curl. And back to the center. Okay, we'll keep going. Pretty easy right here. This is almost flat, so he's really easy to measure. I just want that perfect quarter inch right there. 
and we'll check this side. He's a little bit big, so I'm gonna squeeze him in a little and then check that side again. I definitely don't want him outside my boundary, so I'm making sure he's gonna behave. Oh, we'll get a little bit more curly. You get to decide how much curl that you want in there. Okay, and as we said, the boundary line is right there. I know I can probably fit one more in. So let's go ahead and we'll check it. We'll push this out just a little bit because we want to be right there at a quarter inch. And right there, I can tell that he is going to fit in there. So let's see if we push him out just a little bit more. Right there and right there. Right close to that boundary right there. There we go. All right, so when we do the last one, you guys remember what happened? All right, we do our curl and we're gonna connect it to that one. And we're gonna sort of stop out here, right on this edge. And now we'll just put the little edge in there. Let's get you in just a little better angle right there. So you can see a little bit more. Okay, so we're using the same relationship. We're gonna flip it around so you can see the alignment. Right now, I want to touch the outer edge at a quarter inch, just like we did before. And then I kind of want to be able to get back to this center on this side, on the same side that we would have stitched on. That's the relationship that the other ones have. So that's going to help me. And I'm just going to be real careful here, get up to the top of the lobe and then just sew out to the boundary right there. Okay, and then I'll just close it real quick just so we can finish the design. Okay, let's tack it off. my Bernina today. This is my Bernina 590 and I am sewing with my BSR table. Let me um, go ahead and just flip the design. We want to show you what it looks without all the markings right here and you could see obviously I could use something squatter like shorter this way and wider. I can do a lot of stuff. The thing that I love about this design is I really like this part right here where you get this sort of fun crossover and it fans out. And we fanned it with these curls towards the center, but you can also fan it with the curves going the other direction and it looks equally good. It looks so pretty. So here's the design. I'll cut a few threads real quick. Oh, actually, I guess he's already cut. He was just laying on there. There's a little bunky on there. But don't you think that looks so pretty? I love it. Gorgeous, such a pretty design. So, you know, you can configure those to, to do what you wanna do. You can make them fit. If you don't wanna stitch them double, you can basically sew this and you could come back to this, a certain space over here on the template where it's touching. So we'd have to sew a little far to be inside the boundary. And then you could just pivot and sew the next one and back up and pivot and so the next one. So there's more than one way to do that. This is definitely a style like a peacock for sure. I agree with that. It definitely has that look. I actually played with this heart right here and then putting like a little peacock half face in there. I couldn't perfect it. It didn't look good enough to show, but I'll work on that because it looked pretty, pretty interesting. I think we could have fun with that. Okay, so let's move on to some other designs. And let's go ahead and do a right triangle element real quick. And let's see, I think we need to mark the center. I think that's how we did it on this one. Let me find my, my marking tool. Should have marked it already, right? Okay, so that's where we're gonna start with this one. All 
All right, so let's put our needle down. And there'll be plenty of stitching in the center of that design, so we're just gonna leave it right there. We don't need to tie off anymore. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna put a center element in there, and then we're gonna fan them in two different directions, and that'll let you see. So here we kind of went you know, with the curl going up. And what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna do the curl going the opposite way. So you'll be able to see that. So let's go ahead and we'll do just the first side initially. And what we're looking for is something that's gonna fill this space reasonably. So like if you look, this one, he's maybe a little bit big. This one is the nine and a half. So I'm gonna to go to the eight and a half. And They'll get smaller. This would be the largest one. So remember, we kind of grouped the templates and the eight and a half could float on either side. So this is the eight and a half and all the other ones will be a little smaller, but I'll keep them in that four template grouping so that this part doesn't get too much smaller than the other ones. So that's gonna be the eight, the seven and a half, the six and a half and the five and a half. So that's these four that we're gonna use in this grouping. Let's try it. So right off the bat, right up here at the top, I can use this center as the alignment. So let's just make the mark a little bit bigger so we can make sure we can put that in there. I've marked the center, but I should have actually marked the whole line so that I could get all the way to the, to the top, nice and even right there so we'll just put that on there that'll help us make sure that we can do both sides nice so this one does have the center mark what i think is interesting is some of them do and some of them don't and i'm i'm not sure like what is the rationale but you can see on this one right at the tip of it i have that center mark right there and if you don't have a center mark you know, you could just make one. It's fine, it's definitely gonna be easy for you. Notice how this one is gonna sew potentially outside of our design. If you don't want that, you're gonna have to scoot that down, right? So you could just leave it aligned there and you can just push this down so that nothing is gonna sew outside the box. And this is what I meant by, if I line it right up on this center line, if that's the alignment, like right at the top, he is gonna sew outside of the boundary. So I think it's worth playing with sometimes to get yourself aligned. So I'm gonna make the top of this fit this quarter inch on both sides. I don't want him to sew outside the boundary. So I'm gonna be checking that on both sides, okay? And that'll help me when I line up to get the other side going. So we'll put the circle in and I'm going to line up right here on this side reference line right there so that I know I have some visual, something to look at as I line up the other side. Okay, so let's take it off. We got to flip it over and put it on the other side to get the other side lined up. That's why they have these great slots on there. It makes it easy. Now, we know that we wanna to touch at the quarter inch, but we also need to make sure that all of the other parts right here are touching at a quarter inch as we come around. So we might have to like adjust a little bit and use that spacing gauge, get those alignments in there. So right here, centered at the quarter inch, right there. See if I can really get that nice and tight. And then I can sew around the circle and check, make sure that I'm following that quarter inch right there. I want to be right on that circle as I go around. And then he kind of wings out on this side a little bit. So let's push up just a little bit so we can get back down to the center. Right here, we want to be right at the same position on the bottom. Okay. Now, we can do two things. We can sew this back up to the top. This is like another way that you can work with this tool if you want to. And we can position all of the other ones from this. We can fan out on this side instead of worrying about this position. 
So let's try to make it so we can repeat it on the other side. I'm touching this line with the foot out there. That's one of those random rule things. Let me show you. Right here, we're pretty much touching this line. And I'm going to fill up this whole piece right here and try to keep everything on the boundary line. Okay? So we said that we wanted to flip it different than the other way. So let me look back and both of those curled in like this. So we're gonna make these curl like that, just because we can. So same thing, I can tilt this and I can get whatever I want. If I can't get enough of the curve, I wanna be at least down enough so that I can be at the middle here. That's where the curve is, this curvy part and then I want to align it down at the bottom, right? So if we need to, to kind of spread that out, we're going to have to come right back to the center there. Oh, I should have gone the other way first. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go this way. He's a quarter inch right there. He should touch right at the bottom. And then where we want to flange is when we're over on this side right here, and then you can make this move down, and you're checking your quarter inch on this side and your quarter inch right there. You're looking for just those two things. So down to the bottom first, because that's what closes it. Okay, that gives you the little stem on the bottom. And then here, put your curly cue in, and come over a little bit, and then pivot. You're looking for two things, a quarter inch right there, and a quarter inch right here on this side, aligning that. Let's see where my spacing gauge went. Oh, honey, I dropped it. I don't know where he went. Is he hiding? Let me see if you can find it. Well, I have a spare. Those darn things, they run off on you. I'm gonna use this one. He's clear, but is it under the fabric? It's inside. Oh, it's inside. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. I'm such a ditz, I know, huh? That's funny. Okay, I got my spare though, right? He's keeping, I'm keeping track of him. So you can just check on the outside right there. Make sure that you can be inside the boundary right there, right? We don't wanna be too far out pushing this down and we're looking for that space right there and looking for your quarter inch on this side and then always come back this way first. That closes it right there down to the boundary and then right here we'll curl this way. Okay and then just pivot. Same thing looking for the quarter inch out there you can stretch it you can pull it in whatever you want to do. You can make this touch the inside of the line like that, and that would make everything inside of a quarter inch. So you get some choices. You don't have to do exactly what anybody else does. You can make that choice. Curl, come back out a little bit and pivot. And we're doing that same thing here on the end in order to kind of make it fit a little bit. We are gonna just sew as many as we can, fit him in, and then we'll put sort of like a little tail on the end to get you out to the boundary on the far side. Oh, darn it. I went the wrong way. Again, I wanna go forward. <laughs> but then you end up double stitching everything twice. Silly. Okay, and then here, if I have some extra length, I can just push him out a little bit and I can close just to the boundary, because see if I'm at a quarter inch right here, I can't come all the way back in, because he just wouldn't do it. So I think I'll just take like one more stitch. I don't want to cut into the existing design, and we'll push this out a little bit so that we can get closer to the outer boundary. So you're gonna sew this side first, just to the boundary right there, and then just come out and put the last little curl in there. Right there, and that's it. So then let's go ahead and we'll get this off. And that's the same thing. Now it's a little tricky on this one because we started at the top. So I would want to start at the same position on this one. So you have the option of you could stitch back up to the top, 
right? Or you can cut your thread and just put your needle up there kind of in line with the existing design right there. So let me just turn it a little bit so you can see the look right there. You're not gonna get as much of the crossover when we do it that other way. It's more of like a fan when you do it that way because these kind of all feed into the other. And on this side, they're gonna go that way. Just for your knowledge, they would be curving up like this. Like this. So you're not gonna see as much of that. Let's see if we can, I think we can probably fit one of these in pretty good, right? We wanna touch right there. So he almost would be stitching right along that quarter inch line, maybe one more stitch, I think. It's very, very reminiscent of the same shape, right? You can get yourself up there this way. Ooh, we did good. And then just come back. And then you're just gonna pivot all the way back down on that side and you can finish out that design. So what do you think? Do you like that one too? I know he's pretty. I think so too. It's kind of feathery, but you know, that, that is kind of the shape that these have. They have that curvy top and then sort of a long, loopy look to them. But, you know, there's lots of different things that you can do with them. It's not, you know, that you, you, these would fit great in a diamond. You can do fun flourishes inside of a heart. You can put, you know, some little, but, but they're, cur they're curvy, just like feathers. They have the kind of that shape, you know, the little sort of a teardroppy look to them. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll tack this one off real quick and we'll just cut that because we're gonna move on to another design real quick. It's already four o'clock. Time is just like marched on so quickly. Was that complicated? What do you think? That wasn't complicated, was it? We're just pivoting it down. We're just checking those two places. We're just checking the outside edge and we're making sure we get back to the center. That's it. Once you have those two things, you know, you can, and you can overlap these if you wanted to. So I didn't, I chose not to, but like if this curved up, you could make him intersect over that one if you wanted to, it's no problem. All right, let's go ahead and I've got a nice big space here and I wanna use that 11 and a half and we're gonna show you some fun things you can do with it. So this is the middle. This is 12 inches right here. So the 11 and a half is going to fit in that space. This is half of the distance of 12 inches, right? If this is the start. So he'll definitely fit. This would essentially be your radius of the circle. And then here is the diameter on the base. And if we split that in half, this is the radius too. So any circle or any rectangle that you would want to fill with half of a circle, you can do with these tools. They would fit any size because you've got, you know, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. You've got a lot of choices in order to really fill any kind of a rectangle look that you might want to do. So let's get those two out. Those are both of the largest ones. Okay. And this is the difference in size. They're both the same base and they have the same curvature right here. You can see they align right along there. But if you look at their curve itself, they're very different. This is one and a half inches on the bottom. And I don't know, that looks like he might be one inch on the top but they, they might fudge around a little bit because they grade in size. So we'll put the needle right here at the bottom and we'll get started. All right, we're gonna do the big one first because he's gonna set the stage. He's going to be in charge. And just initially, I'm going to go ahead and do this larger one right here. So I think if I would do that, maybe I want to start um, a little bit forward. So I'm just going to mark it. I won't take my needle out. I'll just show you. I would, I would want to start where I had room to sew. Right here, it's going to go outside the boundary. So it's going to end up hitting about right there. Okay. 
Fortunately, with these tools, you can just take them on and off as needed. Very simple. I love that about them. That's really an easy way to use them. And I'll just sew down to my dot, right? That's all I need. I need to align right there. So we'll just put this boundary in. And I can come back and finish the boundary another time, which I probably would. I do like to ditch different spaces to just make sure that they have a nice clean look to them. Okay, so again, I wanna show you, I'm gonna just adjust a little bit. I wanna show you what we're lining up on. Right there is the start position. So these cross marks need to be aligned right through that needle position, right? And then this is right on the boundary line on the bottom. And you can see we're touching the ruler, which is what we wanted. And so we'll just sew this part. Oh, I think I got crunchy under there. Ugh. We'll come back. Right here, I'm gonna stop sort of right in line, right there. If I, if I had to come back here, I'd sew outside that boundary and I don't want to. So if I just turn it like this, I can line up that center position. This is the widest part right there. And then I'm just gonna line up the needle right down here at the bottom. Can you guys see the bottom? Let me tip it a little. Right there, the needle alignment is right there. And this center line should go right through the needle position. So I should pretty much be able to have the quarter inch right there so I can sew back with this one. So let's just do this one. I think I have some thread throw up on the bottom there. It sounded kind of weird. If it's gonna touch right there and it's gonna sew outside the boundary, just go back up to the top. Just wait for the next one. Cause we don't, we don't want that. We don't wanna sew outside the boundary. So same thing, you can line it up right here and then just tip it and we're aligning this center position each time. That's how we're getting aligned. Let me see if I can adjust the camera so we can see a little bit more of everything as we're sewing. How's that, you guys? You think you'll be able to see a little better both the bottom and the top? It's kind of a big template, so that's kind of what is making the impact right there. So I'm gonna sew around, and I can come back up to the top if I want to. What that does is it does help make sure that we have our shape be exactly the right size because we're stopping in the same place each time. Right here, we're stopping where the needle is aligned right there, and then we're pivoting, and we're getting ourselves aligned down at the bottom so that we can put our needle right in that intersection of the previous spot. So because he's bigger, I'm gonna adjust my hand position a little bit as I go. Get me back to the center. He does not like the edge of the quilt right there. I think it's a little slack right there when he sews and it doesn't like it. So maybe need a little bit more room on the edge there with this one. Okay, so you can see I'm aligned right there and we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna keep pivoting this we're lining it right up at the needle position, and then each time, if we line it up right there, we can use some of the reference lines that are already on there and get us aligned right at the center now. So change your hand position. Make sure you have good control. Make it easy to hold everybody. And we'll just come right back to the top. So right now I am not using my BSR and the reason why I'm not using it is this piece is kind of on the end and it's floating on and off of my BSR sensor. And that would mean that it would basically work and then it wouldn't work and that would be really irritating. So I'm not gonna let it do that. So I'm aligned right up on the center and again, I've got my needle position aligned so I should be able to stitch right back to that center position and if you're ever not sure, of course, your spacing gauge is really easy to get aligned, so I can use that. And just make sure you're touching right here at the top of this curly key right here. Okay, 
right back to the center, come back out to our edge. I almost lost my mind, could you tell? I let go, <laughs> I don't let go until you get back to the bottom. So let me tip it a little bit so you can see that alignment down here on the center. We're using that center position and the cross marks to try and align right on the needle position. There's that quarter inch that we're trying to get each time. And now we're ready to sew. Oh, he does not like it down on the bottom there. There's something going on. It's too much slack in the fabric there. He's very unhappy whenever he's on the bottom. Makes me wonder if I have my uh, single hole plate on there. All right, let's just cut this real quick. Make sure we don't have any thread built up under there creating havoc. So we got something, something happening. It's always near the end right there for some reason. Oh, there's something going on with the bobbin. Let me just pull it out real quick. Make sure that he doesn't have any fluffy in there. He does. Kind of got wrapped around there a little bit. Okay, let me just check under there. Okay. Hey, thanks for your patience. Happens to everybody, right? We gotta just always check that. All right, close up that bobbin case. Make sure that sensor's working. So he did have a little thread throw up right there. I knew that was happening. I could tell that I could feel it on the end. So maybe I need to give a little bit more space on that design um, so that he's not right on the edge right there. So this machine doesn't like it right close to the edge like that. It's too annoying for him. All right, let's go ahead and we'll kind of get restarted right there. We'll just put it right on the edge. And what I wanna do is I do wanna put it on this design and find my correct spot because we were using a very particular alignment space when we did the other ones. And I wanna keep that. I wanna have that same alignment position so that all of these look the same, so that they make that nice pretty curvature right there. So here I'll just do a few tacking stitches, get it right into the existing seam, and then we'll just tack it in. It's because these templates are so easy to get on and off, I can just put this on. I can align it right as if I was stitching this one right here and align right at the center. And I am fortunately right in the spot where I need to be. So then I'll just rotate that and I'll get right down to the base just like I need to. Okay, and we're tacked in so we should be able to just sew. Keeping it right on the edge of the template, adjust my hand position a little bit. And we'll just come right back up to the top now. Can you tell I was gun shy? I was like, please don't mess up. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for it to go crunchy on me. Okay, and then we'll get the last couple ones. I do want to put the last ones of these in because I want to show you the other one and how we're going to use that and add a little bit to this design real quick. So just keep the foot right along the edge there, right till you get up to the boundary. So I'm lined up right there. And each time I'm trying to get filled up right on that intersection, right at the center of this space. As long as we're fully coming back to this center position each time. What is going on with this thing? Oh, look it. I got some thread trapped around my BSR. That's really annoying. That was what was happening. 
Maybe it did that before too, as I was sewing. I'm not sure, I'll have to check on that. I haven't had that happen before. Okay, let's see where we're at. Let's see if we can get ourselves back in there. I can use my quarter inch right there and my quarter inch right there. So I'm gonna use that and get myself lined back up so that I can follow the same line basically. Because I do wanna sew back up. This one might be a little bit off, I can tell. Oh well, it'll be fine. Okay, and then pivot. We won't quite get to the outside. So just like we did before, we wanna do that same thing. We're gonna put sort of a little half of a feather or half a lobe on there. And that, that's why it's really important that we do go back up to the top. Okay, so we're at the center and let's just come back out to that same spot. Oh, we're really close on that boundary. And then just use that and just kind of get yourself out to the edge. That'll just close the design. Usually the space is a little bigger. That's barely anything right there, but at least it says, okay, we finished it. We closed it out. So I wanna go ahead and pull up the other 11 and a half and just show you some of the fun things that you can do with that. That one is the same size. So I'm gonna come right back to the center. I'll use this as the straight edge and we're gonna start putting a little embellishment right in there. It's gonna look awesome. And I think this one really only works well with these two sizes because we don't have the bigger other sizes. Like you don't have a wide nine or a wide eight, whatever. It's only this one size that has it. So let me show you the alignment as we line it up. These all have a curve going this way. So I'm gonna leave it in the same direction and I'm gonna just put this on. Okay, and it's the same length. These are the same relationship. So I wanna maybe fudge it a little bit. What I'm trying to do is put this curl inside the previous one. Can you see it right there? I'm actually aligning the circle, the loop right here, pushing this down a little bit. So he's actually inside the existing loop. And he's pretty much gonna sew initially right on the same line because they have that same curvature a little bit, but gradually it's gonna go away from the curve and it's gonna add a little different look to it. So we'll put this one in with just the curl. Next time I'm gonna make sure I don't do this right on the edge because boy, is that tricky. Let's get right to the center so we can do the next one. We wanna be kind of on this same line right there so we can follow that line and let's get it lined up. Pushing it down a little bit so I can get this part of the circle aligned and trying to you know make this edge touch the stitch line. Let's see, I gotta look over a little bit, there we go. Okay, and we don't want that to be more than a quarter inch. So if I'm looking at this right there, what I might do is maybe let this stitch over one or two stitches so I can get a little bit into the line right there, this line, and then I'll line it up. That way I can pretty much make sure I'm right on that quarter inch. I wanna be pretty close to that initially. And then out here, it departs like right there. And you put your little curl in and then go backwards. And because I made that adjustment right here at the bottom, I'm just gonna kind of scoot this out of the way a little bit and I'll just get myself back to the center because I, I saw that I made an adjustment there and then I can do this one. So same thing, we were looking for the quarter inch right there. That's what we want. We want no bigger than that so we can sort of follow that line a little bit. little curl and back down to the bottom. So there's a lot of thread obviously in this design, especially around the base. 
I'll just move this out so you can see we're getting a lot of thread right here. I don't care. I think it looks amazing. <laughs> so I'm good with it. I don't care how much thread there is. So same thing. Um, if we can't, from that position, be in the stitch line of this other one, just scoot up a few stitches. That'll help you get sort of on the line because these should fit on the line pretty much. So maybe, maybe take another stitch or two. I think we need to be up a little closer so we can get the relationship right there. And then I'll check if I'm fitting right here and we're ready to go. So anytime that I make that adjustment, I wanna make sure when I'm sewing down that I watch for that, that I don't sort of go off of the line and just follow the ruler. I can just adjust the ruler so I can get back to the center if I need to, because it's the same line, it should bring me down there, but I might need to tip it a little bit in order to get back down to the bottom right there. This is the same curve, but maybe I didn't have it aligned in both places. So a little bit of fudging to kind of get this one lined up, get down to the center, that way I can align for the next one. I should be able to see this as the quarter inch right there with just a small adjustment. Okay, and if I, if I can't quite do it, you know, it's okay, just fudge it a little bit. I think this is because the fabric bunched up a little bit right there. There we go. Back down to the center. So let's take it off. I'll let you see it real quick. What do you think? Doesn't that look so pretty? I love it. I totally want to do it on something. I don't know what, but I'm going to find something. <laughs> Just so I can use it because it's so awesome. Okay, same thing. I'm, I've only got a couple more of these, so we'll just go ahead and we'll fill them in. So you can see if I'm checking right here and that quarter inch is not fitting, then I can just immediately see. See how big that is? So maybe I need a few stitches over here so I can get in the line. There we go. And then don't adjust it, okay, until you get back down to the bottom. right here these are not quite fitting perfectly but what you could do is if you didn't care if they fit perfectly you could just allow them to sort of do whatever they wanted because you can see there's going to be double lines right here so if that you know kind of precision fitting is a little too too much work then just don't worry about it just let them do whatever they're going to do and you're fine right there i was able to pretty much i think get it right on that quarter inch so i'm just going to go with it I think I need a couple more stable tapes on this because I feel like he is moving around a little bit more than I would like. Okay, and then we'll just keep going. I think this one will work out pretty good. He's pretty close. couple more we're almost there so I'm going to give this a few stitches up to get in that quarter inch get on that line and a lot of that is because we're estimating as we come back down to the center so you can see the center positions kind of shifted around a little bit and that's why we have to kind of fudge the bottom because we're fudged it already so we have to follow that fudging just to make sure so when we did this last one, if you remember, we started out here. So what you'd wanna do on this one is just shift out a little bit. Use your quarter inch. And so right out to the start point right there, like that. And he's already essentially where it starts departing almost. It's right on this interior curve. 
So what we'll do is we'll just put this on and we'll line it up as best we can. And you probably only have a few stitches, right? So right there, it's gonna track and then it's gonna depart right away from the other one. last one do you think it's worth putting something in there I do I think so also I'll show you how we can align it and kind of get whatever we need out of it we won't get this full part of this but we'll just get a very gentle echo and I think when you're looking for completion if we do all of these with this curve and we don't do that one people's eye are going to go right to that one because they're going to say oh you missed that one Right? So I think it is worth taking a little bit of extra time and just making sure you can line up and just put the little echo in that one. It's worth it. So right there, we're gonna just come back to the boundary. And at that point, that's when I would just fill in the boundary all the way around. So you can just flip this over. You can use that as your straight edge. And that way you can just ditch that whole thing. So I'll just tack it right here just so we'll be done. All right, scissors, where'd you go? Thank goodness I have so many scissors. I can always find one. All right, we do have Bunky on the back. You guys know that, I already showed you. So it's not like I'm trying to hide anything. You know, I would want that to be cleaner, of course. I don't, I'm not sure what was going on there, but it had a little bit of an issue. But you can see if we can sew that, we can just do that so beautifully. Now I do wanna comment really quickly about doing this as a circle. We are making these touch as we are going around in a circle. We have no idea if this width of this shape evenly fits around in 360 degrees. So that is something you would have to play with and you might have to fudge. And a way that you could do it is on the quadrant right here, like if we split this in the middle, you can start on the quadrant so that the very edge, this outside of the feather is touching the straight line and you can sew as many as you can fit in the quadrant. And then on the very last one of the quadrant, force fit him in. So make him skinny, make him like an echo. So for example, if this one was the last one, I would make sure that the last one, no matter what, I would make him touch like that. So maybe he's just like a little echo and he's skinny. And then you'd be starting the next quadrant with a full one right there where the, the touch would be perfect right at the center. And you would just fill in the same amount until you got to the straight. And then you'd force fit the last one on the straight line. So every quadrant would have the same force fitting because you'd be starting at the same position for each quadrant. And that's a way that you can make the design fit in a circle and it would be symmetrical because you'd have your fudge would be basically on whatever the, the four ordinal directions are. So that is something that you could do to make it, this fit perfectly in a circle. And, or you can make more lines. Like if you did eight lines, you can do that same thing. So on every eighth line, you force fit it to fit so that when you start the new eight line, it's a full width of whatever that is. And different ones are different thicknesses, so you're going to be able to play with different dimensions on these curly cues right here, because some of them are fatter and some of them are skinnier. So that would be something that you would have to play with in order to make those happen. And then let me just show you one more fun thing. Um, I think it would take a little bit more play in order to, to put this into a design and make it what I want out of it, but I think it's really pretty, so I'm just gonna show you it real quick. And I'll just use a regular size, a regular size. Okay, 
And I'm going to use my stitching my discs just to show you the potential here. I think that's a good size. So let's just put one of these in. I'm just going to sew it with my pen. Okay, and we'll just sew this one. And I, I can sort of stop wherever I want. I just want to like tip this a little bit. And I want to look at it when I tip it. Where is it going to stitch around and be a quarter inch apart from this one? So like if I stopped right here and I tipped this a little bit, then I can put sort of a little echo in there like that until I sort of come down to the bottom and then I would have to adjust the bottom to reconnect. There's a little point right in here where you would end up pivoting this so that you could connect back to the bottom. But I love the ribbon. I love it. I think it looks so awesome. So then you would follow this back up and maybe you would start right at this point with the next one, right? And you would adjust the bottom so you have the same curvature on the bottom, right? And then we would sew this one, okay? And then we have to kind of figure out, you know, how are we going to tip this a little bit so we can get that ribbon in there. Uh, darn it, we got to start on that side, right there. So one is smaller and one comes over the top. So you're basically, you can audition the look of that just by looking at it. What you're looking for is if your needle is right there in that position, you're tipping this and just going to sew around it. And here's the challenge is that I, I see that once we do it, we're kind of um, cutting in to this one. So we almost need to start the other one over here and go that way, right? So we're not cutting in because this would need to be the first one. And then the other one would have to go over the top of that to put the next one in. So you'd have to be shorter. I think we'd have to go in that direction. But I, I see potential here that I wanna explore and play with because I think there's a lot, a lot, a lot of things that this template can do. And honestly, I, I haven't played with it that much. And once I started playing, I was like, oh, I think I could do everything. <laughs> I think it'd be awesome. So, and then let me put one more little tip in here. This part of this design is essentially a circle, right? I know that it is. So I have lots of different size circles and one of probably the most convenient circles that I have that would work well for this would be to use something like the mini multi-arc and you could just lay this on there and say, oh, look at that, <laughs> right? Now I can echo that. I can literally stick that right on there and I can echo and I can echo and I can echo, and I could put a whole echo fill right around there with just some basic circles. Anyway, we are pretty much right at our cut time. Like, I feel like I could go on and on with these templates. I feel like there's a lot more to explore. So let me see. Um, Judy asked, I missed the first few minutes. Which set has the fatter curl? Okay, let's see which one that is. I think that's number two. Number two is the only one that has the wide curl. And it's only a single one. It's not all of them. It's just that one that will fit into that 12 inch square. So here's the information for the two of them. I'll just put that up. You can buy the full set. It is available. It's quite pricey. That's 12 templates. Or you can just buy set one or set two, or you can just buy whatever you want. <laughs> Thank you for a great class. You're exhausted. Why is your brain tired? My brain's tired too. I'm going to go eat. <laughs> Thanks, Mary, for watching. Thanks, Donna. I'll just say hi. Oh, I have one more thing. My husband is reminding me. Oh, wait a minute. If you are willing to like, comment, and share this video, despite all of my boo-boos and bonbons and fun stuff, I am willing to give you a copy of my new Crossworks quilt pattern as a PDF for free. And here is the caveat. I'm going to pick two people. This is just me sharing it. It's not so steady. It's just me sending it to you. What I'm asking is 
if you would read through it and see if it makes sense. I'm asking for a little community collaboration. So it's pretty much done, but you know, I think it's really important for quilters to have eyeballs on it. My husband is an amazing technical editor and he's done a lot of work on this to help me, but I think it'd be really great if we can get some quilters to get their eyes on it and see if you like it and see if you think that it would be good. So the quilt's really pretty, it's already done. I've already made it. Um, I did test all the blocks a few times, and so I think it's definitely going to work. And this is for the class that I'm hosting for the Sew Show on Tuesday. So we'll actually be making this block right here, just the block, one of them. We are going to make it with the five and a half inch spin effects size, but on the quilt, it's actually the seven and a half inch size. So this block is about 21 and a half. It's really big. And the one for the five and a half inch spin effects is about 15 and a half inches for a single block. So I'm gonna go ahead and share those out. I'm gonna award two awards. We're gonna probably um, notify the winners. I think on Wednesday, usually Sarah helps me from uh, So Steady. So we're just gonna ask her if she will help me select the winners and notify the winners. And once I get your information, it's just a PDF I'm gonna send to you. Okay, so also, I have a ton of classes coming up, a ton of them. I posted a bunch of them on my Fabricated Quilts page. So many different templates, so many different things coming up. I try to always put something new in the content to keep it fresh for everybody. So um, make sure you're checking the events list, especially if you have other um, instructors that you like as well. Um, I'm really excited that Nana Pan has been able to um, start working and sharing in her native language so that we can share our ruler work community with a lot more people. So if you want to support her, she has that on her Facebook page that she's posting and she's a super talented lady. So, so I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye and thank you guys so much. Check out all of the information so you can see what's happening in the near future. Okay. Also live class in New Jersey, Northern New Jersey. I'm going to be there the 20 something, 21, I think. Yeah, 20th, and 21st. 20th and 21st. So if you're in that area, definitely would love to say hello in person. So sign up. Okay. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.